I share recipe videos with you guys all of the time. But today's video is extra special. What is up you guys? If this is the first time that you're stopping on one of my videos, welcome. My name is Kira, and in today's video, I am going to share with you four really easy breakfast recipes that are out of a new cookbook that I just received. So if you guys are not new to my channel, then you may already know that I love to share recipes out of cookbooks. I do it all the time. I can even link some playlists down below, but I have shared a bunch of food hack recipes from a cookbook that I found at the Dollar Tree. My husband has even done a segment here on my channel called Food for Dudes where he also shared some recipes out of a cookbook that we found at the Dollar Tree. I've cooked some recipes out of the Fifty Shades of Chicken cookbook, which I found on Amazon. It's a parody cookbook towards the actual Fifty Shades of Grey trilogy books. And then I've even shared recipes out of my own cookbook. So I've written two. They're both available on Amazon and they're linked down below in the description box as well. But this time it's a little bit different because this time I'm sharing a cookbook that is not mine. It's not from the Dollar Tree. It's nothing I purchased on Amazon. It's of a friend. Friends. So this one is called the Essential Pantry Cookbook and it was written by my friend Jen Chapin. So Jen has a YouTube channel here on YouTube. If you don't already know who she is, I'll link it for you guys down below. But she has been a friend of mine for a very long time. She started following me a long, long time ago back when her channel was just scrapbooking before she even dove into the food world. And since then, and she has expanded her channel, she has just blown up and I've totally enjoyed watching her and recently she just put out her own cookbook so I was super ecstatic I couldn't wait to get my hands on it she has sent it to me and asked me if I could review it and I really enjoyed a bunch of the recipes that were in this cookbook so I told her that I was going to do a video and share some of them and today I'm going to share with you four breakfast recipes that we did one night for breakfast for dinner so I'm really excited to share them with you they are really easy but super yummy. So let me take you down to my kitchen and I'm going to share with you four recipes that Jen just put in her new cookbook. So we're starting out first with the hash brown breakfast bake, which when I first saw this recipe, I thought it would be a perfect addition to our breakfast nights, especially to switch up what we would normally have. And what I love is the versatility of this recipe. So besides needing shredded hash browns, some butter, you need eggs, milk, and salt and pepper. You also have the option to switch things up, like the kind of meat that you're going to put in, whether it's bacon or breakfast sausage ham. You can switch up your type of cheese, and you can also switch up your type of vegetable. So it pretty much caters to everybody. So I have everything that I need right here. I decided to do onions and ham with shredded cheddar cheese. I thought that would be perfect. Now, we're going to talk for a second about these hash browns because... Let me tell you how easy it is to make a simple mistake. So right now in this bowl, I emptied the whole 24 ounce package of hash browns. I put the salt and pepper in there and then some melted butter and I mixed it around. She calls for using a nine by nine. So I sprayed that with some cooking spray and put the hash browns in. And as soon as I put the hash browns in, I noticed that I made a mistake. So she wants you to bake it for 20 minutes to to get a nice crust on the bottom before you're going to add the mixture that we're about to make but she calls for three cups of shredded hash browns so let me just remind you that three cups of shredded hash browns does not actually measure up to 24 ounces even though there's eight ounces in a cup measurement is different than volume so that's kind of my mistake and if I didn't know any better on how to alter the recipe to make it work, I probably would have screwed this up. But I had to let those hash browns cook for double the amount of time so that it would still be firm enough to support what we put on top. So we put our eggs, our milk, our diced up onion, the ham, the shredded cheese. And once that that bottom base was baked enough, we went ahead and added the top. Now, had I had put in the right amount of hash browns, the egg and the mixture would have been enough. But because it was so thick on the bottom for the amount of hash browns that I put in, I did end up going back and adding two more eggs. So 
that it held everything together and it made this. This ended up being incredible, you guys. And I'm just glad that I was able to adapt while I was cooking so that I was still able to make this thing incredible. It was so good, especially since I let those hash browns cook as long as I did because it just created such a firm base for the egg mixture. And the onions were sweet. I used the Vidalia onions. So it was super sweet and it was perfect with the ham and the cheese. Like it made a perfect base. I was able to cut this into 12 square chunks and we just had this alongside of the rest of our breakfast items and I must say that I was really impressed and I love the idea that I can go back and make this again and it can be something entirely different just by simply adding different ingredients for the next time. Now, next up, we're going to pull from her section that's called Baking Staples, which inside of that section is a essential pancake recipe. She has a lot of recipes that are just base recipes that you can go ahead and tweak on your own. So it's always good to have a great pancake recipe in your arsenal because you can always add anything you want, whether it's chocolate chips or fruit. So all the ingredients are what you see here, which I'll explain as we go. But the surprise to me was the vanilla. I've never put vanilla in my pancake mix before. I've done it into things like French toast and stuff, but never pancakes. And that was the difference for me. So we're going to start off by making buttermilk. So we're going to throw some milk in a bowl with some lemon juice, and we're going to put it off to the side for 10 minutes. And that's going to go ahead and quote unquote, curdle the milk and make it into buttermilk. So now we'll go ahead and add our sugar, our flour, our baking soda. We'll add salt if you choose to do that she adds a pinch of salt. I'm not one for adding salt to things like that. So I omitted that. And then once you go ahead and give your dry mixture a stir, now we're going to mix in the vanilla, the milk, the eggs, and some melted butter. And you're going to whisk that all together. And then once that's all mixed and incorporated, we'll work that into our dry mix. And then that's it, you guys. That's your essential base pancake mix. So if you don't want to use a box mix, and you want to do like a regular traditional pancake at home, this is such a great base recipe. And like I said, you can add anything you want, whether you want to do banana nut, maybe you want to do blueberry, maybe you want to do chocolate chip. But I have this tremendously large copper griddle and I always feel like that's perfect for making pancakes. I've only used this probably about four or five times, so I'm still learning the temperature. You'll notice as I flip them over that they're not that perfect golden brown that I would like, but with every new appliance, it usually takes a little bit of time to kind of work out the kinks where you can learn where your hot spots are. That's definitely a good looking pancake right there, but you'll see when I start to flip them over that they're not all that perfect golden brown, but like I said, I'm still kind of working out the kinks pinks on this griddle. I didn't get a final picture of all of the pancakes done on one plate because this happened to be a night that we did breakfast for dinner and everybody was feeling pancakes. So they were pretty much eating them off the griddle, but I do have a vlog that I can link up above where I share with you guys everything that was left over because I made all of this in one day. So whatever was left over, I froze and store, but I do have that to share with you guys in a vlog that I can link up above. All right, now we're into cream cheese danishes and I'm really excited about sharing this recipe because I've done something similar before. Vanessa over at Lemonade Mom shared a recipe on how to make these cream cheese danishes, but Jen kind of changed it up a little bit and I like her addition. So here's all the ingredients that you're going to need. Instead of vanilla extract, I'm using almond extract in the cream cheese mix. That really changed things up a bit and made more of a cheesecake element for me, which is something that I really enjoy. And I added a little bit of a fruit spread because you guys know my husband and his raspberry. And so I put a little bit of raspberry fruit spread on the inside. Now I am going to say this right now we're making our mixture. So we're going to start off by creaming the cream cheese and sugar together. So you needed a whole block of cream cheese that you're going to whip until it's really good and creamy. And then you'll put in one egg yolk and you'll just keep whipping that at each step. You're going to add something one by one. So now we're going to add our 
our lemon juice and then our almond extract and then we're going to go ahead and whip again which is just how you make cheesecake you add a little bit at a time and then whip between each step now she only calls for one log of crescent rolls and she tells you to cut them into 16 pieces for me personally i feel like these were kind of small there was so much mixture left over so you can cut the mixture in half if you want to but i personally would have liked a larger danish i felt like the amount that she said to add to the inside of this is kind of impossible due to the amount that is actually left when you cut the crescents so small. So to do what she said, I would have only made these into eight pieces because once that you go ahead and cut them into a little piece, you kind of form a well on the inside so that it's almost like a little mini pie shell that you can put your filling in. And once you get all of your pieces down, then you're going to go ahead and baste them in some melted butter and then I sifted a little bit of brown sugar onto the top and then once you're done you're going to go ahead and ladle your mixture but her mixture said do two tablespoons to the inside and I can only get like one teaspoon just because they were so small when baking something like this you want to make sure that your filling stays inside of that little cup that you're making but it was kind of hard to manipulate such a small round and then as you can see when I took them out of the oven they kind of oozed out a little bit because there wasn't a whole lot of space but I will say that these were really delicious the difference between what she did and what Vanessa did was basting that butter and the brown sugar on the top which really did give an extra sweetness element to them if you didn't have that raspberry on there you're still looking at only that cream cheese filling but these were really good they would freeze really well they stored really well in the refrigerator so that you don't have to eat them all at the same time I just like I said would have preferred a larger Danish and I did have so much of that mixture left over that I ended up making little tiny cheesecake like things I bought the little mini already done graham cracker pie shells and I just filled them with the leftover mixture and ended up making like little mini cheesecakes just so I didn't make the mixture go to waste but again, you guys, this is something that's completely versatile. So having a recipe like this allows you to do whatever you want to it. You don't have to do almond extract. You can do vanilla. You could do larger danishes. You can stay with the smaller ones. I love at the bottom of every one of her recipes, it says cooking tip or storage tip. Like she gives you a little bit more to go on, which I absolutely love that. That makes for a good recipe. Now we're on to our last recipe and this is called a mix and match muffins. So again, the same concept. She gives you a basic muffin recipe. So no other flavor other than just a muffin. And then you get to choose how you want to alter that muffin. So she gives you a wide variety of choices on what exactly that you want to do. Maybe you want to do blueberries. Maybe you want to do a apple and cinnamon. I chose to do the the banana peanut butter and chocolate chip I thought that would be amazing for something that I know that my kids would absolutely love muffins are easily freezable and they're also great for dessert when you do something like this so we're going to start off by putting our flour into a bowl and then we're going to add our sugar you're going to use a white sugar and then you're also going to use some baking soda and then once you go ahead and mix all of your dry ingredients together we're going to create a well for mixing in our wet ingredients. So we're going to throw in some milk. Then we're going to throw in some melted butter, which melting butter inside of these kinds of recipes really just makes it super, super moist. Then we're going to add in some eggs. And then once we go ahead and mix that all together, now it's time to mix in our mix-ins. Like what I just shared with you guys is it. That's her base recipe. Now you do you. So I put in some chocolate chips and some peanut butter and then one mashed banana and I mixed it all together and I gave it a little bit of a taste test and she called for two. I thought that might be too much, but it was ended up being perfect. I even went back and added another dash of chocolate chips. I tasted the batter and it was perfect. The peanut butter, the banana, the chocolate. The only thing I will say is keep in mind if you're cooking these muffins and you need a specific amount her base recipe yields 12 but once you add in anything extra then you're going to get more so I got 18 muffins 
out of it. And we're going to stop for a second. And I'm going to let you guys hear my reaction to the hot muffin. <laughs> Sorry about the language, you guys, but it was super, super hot. And I did not expect that, but I wanted to be able to pick it up and share it with you guys so that you could see how that it was. It cooked up perfectly. I really, really enjoyed them. You can see here, I love a good muffin with some butter. That's why I said I liked the idea of the butter on the inside because it was really, really moist. And then I added some additional butter to the outside. I'm Paul Dean through and through. So I love myself some good butter and it just melted and it kept it extra moist. And I loved the butter flavor with the chocolate and the peanut butter and the banana. These were so good. Like I said, they freeze well. So I was able to defrost them and the kids have been eating them for breakfast. Like I cannot wait to try this recipe and switch things up a bit. I'm thinking next time I want to do the apple with cinnamon and sugar. That sounds divine, especially for the fall. All right, you guys. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed. And if you did, make sure to give it a huge thumbs up. In the description box, I'll put a link on how to purchase Jen's cookbook in case you want to purchase it. There are so many other delicious recipes that I can't wait to share with you. I've already filmed four more savory recipes like side dishes and main course dishes, and I'll be sharing that video in a couple of weeks. So if you enjoyed today's and you're not already subscribed, make sure to subscribe, hit that notification bell so you're notified when I upload. And all right, guys, that's it. So thanks so much for watching. I love you guys all so much and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye guys.